But unlike Edison, we've got some very impressive technology these days to help with the search. Each of these spinning points of light represents the readings from thousands of sensors. This is a high-tech treasure map for America's fastest growing renewable resource. Wind. Across the country, over 36,000 wind turbines dot the landscape. We converted the data produced by those sensors, revealing stunningly complex wind patterns sped up 10,000 times. All of this data provides a picture of what the wind conditions and weather conditions are like across the country. With the new technologies that have been developed in the last 10 or 15 years, it's really become possible to predict with quite good accuracy how windy it's going to be at any location in the country. In Albany, New York, I've come to see Dr. Michael Brower, who uses this mapping data to help identify new wind project sites. Looking at the simulation, why are certain regions better for building wind projects than others? The uh, main wind project development area for the U.S. right now was in the Great Plains. Really a, a whole band from central Texas on up to the Dakotas. Almost all of this area is very windy most of the time. And there are also some nice terrain features in this area, hills, uh, small ridges, mesas, and so forth, which, which help to concentrate the wind. The problem along the west coast is that there uh, are mountains which are blocking the, the path. And so the atmosphere looks for channels. One of the main gaps is the Columbia River Valley, which is the only sea level passage through the Cascade Mountains in the Pacific Northwest. So the Columbia River Gorge is basically a funnel, and so all the wind shoots through that funnel, creating a wind superhighway. Exactly, and in fact, that area has been a region of very active wind development 